<laughs> All righty, we're back. We have our attack decay sustain release knobs. We have our labels and nothing does anything. Um, and now it's time to actually make it do something. <coughs> so let's start by maybe uh, introducing another concept. So everything we did right now, you saw that we started with this thing on init and the last line of code is end on. Basically, this is... Um, all the setup of our instrument goes in here. And when I say in here, what is this in here? So this init thing, it's a callback. A callback is basically something that gets executed on a certain, when certain conditions are met. Um, and the condition for this init callback is exactly as it's called. It's really kind of logical, on init. So when you init, so literally on init gets called, um, save changes, yes. On init gets called when you literally, boom, you load this instrument, it's loading, it's noticing that it has a case P script, it goes through that case P script, it sees that it has an on init, defined in it, and it runs this, this, we call it callbacks. It's called a callback. So it runs this callback. This happens. Um, now this is only one particular type of callback. There are other callbacks. So contact knows how to react to different things. So for example, when you click a note, any incoming MIDI note, there's a callback called a note callback. And it even says here in the code completion, note callback executed whenever a note message is received. And you have code here. And similarly to that, there's on release, on different things, as you can see, on controller, on controls, different types of things that, that get executed when different things happen. Now, in our case, what we want, <coughs> what we want to execute is when you move attack, right? We want to change something in the engine. We want to actually change the envelope in the engine. Same for the case sustain and release. So what this callback is called is on UI control. And it basically, let's read the code completion. UI callback executed whenever the user changes the respective UI element. It says on UI control, and then you have the variable, and then your code here. Amazing. This is literally exactly what we want. So we can actually delete this um, yeah, this boilerplate and this comment over here. And we know that we want our, our different thing in jig here. So let's start, let's do them one by one. And let's see that we, um, yeah, that we get everything right. So let's think for a minute. So when the user moves the slider, we would like it that in contact itself, this slider is connected to, um, yeah, we have this old error here, sorry. We want this slider <coughs> to actually kind of be, let's call it bound to this particular control over here. And it's literally this particular one. What if you have, um, we can get into that in other videos, but you have other groups and other, a lot of other stuff in contact, maybe other places where there is an attack knob, another attack knob, sorry for the, for the ping. But um, let me just close this so it doesn't happen again. Sorry. So we go we go back. Um, yeah. Sorry for losing my train of thought there for a second. So you basically want those two parameters to be bound, and you want it to be bound exactly to that attack specific attack knob in that specific group in that specific place in contact. So let's think about it. So this this is actually a parameter in the engine. Remember when we said we have controls and controls have control parameters. So we did this, right? We have the panel, uh, we're telling it, hey, your panel, uh, we're telling it, uh, hey, your mouse behavior, your picture, et cetera, et cetera. Same way we have engine parameters <coughs> and um, the different engine parameters have uh, constants and names of their own. So you can look in the manual. I happen to kind of, I mean, with experience, you kind of know a little bit at least what are the names of the engine parameters and it's also quite logical. <coughs> so let's try to look for the engine parameters for attack, decay, sustain, and release and attach them to our knobs. So what we're gonna do is same as set control par, we're gonna do set engine par. So when the UI slider comes in, we want to affect this engine parameter. And this, the way it's called in context, same as control par, always starts like this. So first, the, the commands are kind of similar, right? So set control par command, similar set engine par command, 
And similar, you have the constants to say which one. Um, and we say, okay, let's look for it. So engine par, and it always starts with engine par. <coughs> and then the command, <coughs> look, it's actually giving us the option over here. It, it is this one. And then the value that we want to set is the value of the slider. And this is what I mentioned before. So in internally in contact, a lot of stuff works with a range of zero to one million, and then it's scaled to whatever this needs. So obviously the slider is milliseconds, and it also has some sort of scaling of the knob and everything. Like, um, like this might already be 100,000, for example. But that all doesn't matter because everything is scaled to zero to one million. So as the builder, you only need to worry about in this particular case, at least, in 0 to 1 million. So cool, we're telling it the value, we're setting which engine parameter, engine parameter attack, but we also need to say, hey, wait, where does this engine parameter live inside contact? Now, please look at the manual to really understand this slotting system, um, but suffice it to say, we need to tell it where it is. In, in our case, we're inside the group level, we only have one group in our instrument, it's a very simple example. We just threw one sample in, there is one group, and contact is zero based. So we're saying, look, please target the very first group, group zero. <coughs> there is no uh, uh, slot um, and generic really, really in this case, because it's not like, like the effect slots, but basically it's the, the slot of the modulator and in our case, we again, we don't really have a slot. We have one thing here. So and we can also very easily get these values. So we right click here and we see, we see that this particular envelope is group zero, index zero, and the generic parameter is minus one. So even if we don't understand what that means, we just know what it is because we right clicked on it and it told us. So basically, what? let's wrap it all up. So we're saying, hey, when on UI control, which UI control, attack slider. When this comes in, doesn't even matter the value it. Someone touched it, the control, the control happened. When this happens, invoke setting an engine parameter. The engine parameter that we wanna set is attack. We want to use the value of the slider for that engine parameter's value. And that actually, um, that, that engine parameter, it lives in group zero, it's part of the modulator that is in slot zero, and it, the generic is minus one, generic is not used in this context, let's not get into that. So let's try it, Whew. hope we got it right, no mistakes in creator tools at least, and now we, we still don't have the label connected, so we don't have visual feedback on our own thing, but we can just try it, so let's take attack all the way up, whoa, and we see, hey, awesome, attack is all the way up. Let's take attack all the way down. Attack is all the way down, and if we wanna really, really make sure, in the middle, yes, also in the middle. So we know that we did we did good. This is correct, and um, yeah, we can just go on with our lives. But maybe before copy-pasting this to the rest of them, let's do one that has completely everything that we need, including the labels and everything else, and then, and then go on um, with like uh, with the other ones, so we set the, the the attack over here. But again, we don't we don't, and obviously the user doesn't, right? The user is in this mode actually, and they just want to see that okay, what is the value for the attack on the label? That's the whole reason we have the label here. So we can um, at this point let's start simple. Let's say when this comes in, we wait. We already know this command. We know that there is set text. So when this slider comes in, let's do the exact same thing. We're setting, we're setting the engine parameter <coughs> attack to the value of this slider, and let's just display what we did so we know what's going on. So very, very simply, oh, yes, it works. But you immediately see that's, that's actually not what we wanted, right? So a few things, there's multiple things here that we don't want. First of all, we don't want zero to one million. We, we couldn't care less. It doesn't mean anything to us. We want to actually see this. We want to see the milliseconds. That's what we want. And the second thing that's not right is that, wait a minute, we move the, the knob. Okay, it's, it's fine that it shows us the value, but 
now we're done here and uh, yeah, it should go back to attack probably, right? Like it's a bit weird like this. So we know we need to do two things. So let's take care of them one by one. Let's first take care of like not showing um, zero to one million and showing the actual <coughs> engine parameter value. I remember when I told you in one of the first videos that each control has these control parameters, right? And you can set them and we, we, we saw that we can do it, but at the same time, you can also get all these parameters. So instead of um, going to the, uh, yeah, to the slider and saying, hey, Mr. Slider, please set your mouse behavior. I can also ask Mr. Slider, hey, what is your mouse behavior? And it, in our case, it would go and say uh, four minus 450 or whatnot. The same thing goes for engine parameters. So now I set the attack um, to the engine. I set it to the actual zero to one million nov value, but I know that in the engine, it responded to that, but it also spits out a, a millisecond value. And I know that there's proof, right? I know that it knows because it's showing it here. So there must be a way to get that. So the command to do that is instead of directly um, actually showing our slider, we want to do get and there's two ways. Let's show the simple one. So the very, very first thing, like the actual engine parameter, if we do get engine par. So we do get engine par. <coughs> we know, and, and here it's kind of exactly the same because we know we want attack. And we actually know, we can even copy paste this. We know exactly where it sits. It's the exact same thing. We just want to get the value. So if we do like this, maybe you're already guessing it. Nothing will really, really, really change because it's still getting the zero to one million because that's what's behind the scene. What we need is not the, the and there's two commands. So get engine par will give you that zero to one million <coughs> or whatever that the range is. In our case, zero to one million. But if we do engine par disp, aha, uh -huh. well, we don't want the full completion. We just want to change it to disp. There's another command and disp is short for display and that will give you the actual display value. So we don't need to change anything else. All we do is, hey, give us the display value and not the actual engine value. And now, whoa, and do we have an error? We do, we have an error. So get engine par disp. Let's see, maybe get engine par disp. What did we do wrong? So we need parameter group, ah, no, we did everything right. Actually, we're a bit stupid. I'm a bit stupid because it literally tells us, look how the, the parentheses here are in red. It means that there is one that wasn't closed correctly. And yeah, that's, that's all that needed to happen. Now we have no error. And now you can see that it's going uh, by milliseconds. Another small quirk though, is if you go here, you see that contact actually adds this MS this millisecond value. You could maybe argue, yeah, I don't care about that, but it starts to get tricky when you have different things, right? Look, curve is percentage. Attack, hold, decay here are millisecond. Sustain is actually dB, and release is actually millisecond. So it's a bit, there's different values and uh, it should kind of probably reflect that in our instrument as well. <coughs> so we're kind of good to go. We have everything that we need. We have the display value, it is correct. All we need to do is add to that the kind of the, the value the value type. So if we just do MS, that should kind of solve our use case. And now it's yeah, it's adding the MS value next to the value that it's getting. So we're good to go here as well. But uh, what we're left with is this particular behavior that it's not flipping back to how it should. Now, <clears throat> the way we code this, it's a little bit maybe, I, I don't know if it's super simple to understand for, for kind of beginners, but it's actually repeating and it's an easy thing and you kind of just, um, yeah, you copy paste it for all of your controls. So basically what we, let's think about it for a second. <coughs> what we wanna do, <coughs> control comes in, we, we change the value to this value. Maybe we wait a little bit and then we change it back. If you go to a lot of contact instruments, that's kind of how it's done, right? So it'll say whatever the value is and go back to saying attack. And we can think about it. So what are we basically saying here? We're saying, look, 
This comes in, set it to this thing, a jig, and then after a while, set it back to attack. So we can already we already know we're gonna need this. We're gonna need to set it back to attack. But if we just add this like this, it's gonna be immediate. There's gonna be no time to see the millisecond value. It's just gonna immediately at like you know, real time speed, go and set the label to attack, you're not gonna see the value. So we need some sort of waiting in between. So I'm gonna I don't know what I let's see UI wait. What do I usually make it? Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna take it from another instrument. Excuse excuse that, but we're gonna make a new constant and we're gonna call it UI wait and we're gonna give it a wait time. You can you can go and um, look at like the values um, and play around with it yourself and find a value that makes sense. But suffice it to say, we want to wait a little bit. The command is very simple. It's just wait, at least the one we want right here. <coughs> we tell it how long to wait. We could enter a, a direct value over here, but again, this goes back the same as the mouse behavior. What if you have 200 callbacks and now all you want to do is quickly experiment and change the wait time. So you can, you only need to change it here. You don't need to change it in all your callbacks. That's just the correct way to do it. So we're going to put our UI wait in here. We're actually not done, but let's see what happens if we just do it like this. So now we have attack the case of frame release. We're moving attack and it's kind of cool. Look, it's kind of working. But if we start moving other knobs, and you'll see it if we if we have more of those. Let's so let's let's see why why this is not okay. So let's take the K. So far so good, right? We're kind of happy. So we can just go um, attack slider, and where is the the K slider again? Copy paste. We know that it's going to be the K. We know that it's going to be the decay label, and <coughs> we know that the engine part. It's not attack. And again, there's no need to memorize. It's probably going to be decay. So engine part decay. <coughs> and again, it's the same slotting because we're basically, the slotting is about targeting the, the envelope here. So it's part of the envelope. And we that's the slotting. We have it inside. Decay is also millisecond. We're good here. And I guess we change the text here to decay. Now we have them both. We're on our way to doing what we want to do. Let's quickly just test the decay code. So let's go all the way up, 25. <coughs> and yes, this is this is working. And the label is working as well. So this is kind of all working out now. And let's continue adding the rest. So decay, sustain, And sustain, sustain, uh, where is sustain label, sustain label, sustain label, sustain. And let's think for a minute because sustain is actually not milliseconds, it's TB. Let's see that we did everything. Yeah, looks fine. You can also kind of cheat. Because of the way we named everything, we can actually go here, make a new file, just showing you some, yeah. I mean, it's completely unnecessary here, but if we just take the word sustain, replace it with the word release, it's going to do them all. Well, except this one, because, yeah. It wasn't really faster in our case, but yeah, you can also do it this way. It, it's more use, useful when you have like a chain of a lot of stuff you need to change and then yeah and then the find rip your find replace game basically defines how fast you can you can uh, kind of do this oh I forgot one yeah so in, in this case it was completely pointless what I did cool <coughs> we have a bunch now and it seems to be working and we do have a few more things that we need to take care of and we will look at them in the next video.